All right, so we're back, guys. We got Coach Brian Hales of Butler, uh, the grandfather of Mecklenburg County football. <laughs> Dang, grandfather now. Oh, my gosh. Did you, did you ever think you'd be one of the old guys? No, definitely did not. I thought I was going to stay like 30 forever, and uh, it's been a little bit jarring here the last few weeks. Well, let's get right to it. We got a really big football game. It kind of feels like back to the future. Um, Independence of Butler, both highly ranked, Sweet 16 statewide, even the Carolinas top 25 playing for a conference championship. Is this the way it should be? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, in our world down here in, you know, Southeast Charlotte, um, you know, it's just the way things are. You know, Butler Independence with big stakes and you know, a lot, uh, you know, a lot of say so what's going to happen, you know, not just in Charlotte, but statewide. What do, you, what do you guys have to do to beat uh, the big guy? Um, you, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, I think we're a pretty good football team, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, for us, it's always, and this is your favorite thing, but, um, you know, just just playing as good as we could possibly play. Um, you know, we want to be air-free before the ball snapped. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure we're not doing, you know, silly things after the ball is snapped. You know, those are two really big things. Um, so, you know, of course, we want to take care of penalties, take care of the football, things like that. But, you know, I don't think we need to go to extremes and, you know, kind of recreate the wheel, what we do defensively and offensively. We just need to, you know, be really good at the things that we already do. Talk about your team this year, Coach. I mean, everybody talks about the Roseville game. Roseville turned out to be a really, really good football team. Um, but how have you guys gotten on the run since the Roseville game? And clear this up for me. How many players missed that Roseville game start? <laughs> you know, that's been cracking me up seeing seven. I, I was hoping we kept waiting and we'd be up to about 15 starters out for that one. But, no, um, you know, honestly, we were a little bit beat up. But, um, you know, in terms of starters, maybe two. Okay. Maybe three is pushing it probably. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of them was DeQuadre, who – Probably seems like he's about seven players at some time. Quadre <laughs> Curran, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, for sure, for sure. He's fantastic. But, you know, he was out. You know, we were a little bit beat up at the receiver spot that night more than anything, really. Mm -hmm. But, no, all this, we had seven starters out. No, I don't know where that came from. But how have you guys gotten on a run? Was it that win <laughs> down in Georgia that did it? Or what was it? Because that's well, one of the biggest wins ever in Charlotte history, if you ask me, by the way. Yeah, no, I think it is, too. But, you know, when you go back to that Roseville game and, um, you know, we lost by two points. And, you know, as we all know, there that's one play, you know, and it could have been one play all over the place. So, you know, we went back and we looked at the number of plays we took off, you know, as individuals that mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. And there was probably 30 to 40 instances of a guy taking a play off that was on the field and just pointing out that if any of those plays were different, there was a different outcome. And, you know, that really, you know, that really hit home with this group after that first week and, you know, realizing that we're not the team that we could just kind of show up and, you know, people are going to fall down for us. Um, so we've got to play really hard. Now, you know, what happened when we went down to Georgia is that we didn't practice out. We didn't really practice much for that game, honestly. Um, we were in the gym quite a bit because of the heat. Um, I think we got outside to practice one day going into that game. Um, and, and that was over almost a two-week period. But, um, you know, I think one thing that it did is it forced our guys to really, really come together as a team. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I mean, obviously with the close quarters having to be in the gym to practice, um, you know, the long bus rides and that up to Roseville and then down to Atlanta and the time that they all spent together – um, has really, really, you know, paid off. And it wasn't something we went into the season saying that, you know, let's do this stuff mm -hmm. and bring it together. It just, it just happened organically. And honestly, I didn't even really notice it. It was, um, it was Mark Sanders, it was Coach Sanders that pointed it out. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it made too much sense. And so, no, it's, it, it's funny that, you know, we all talk, we want our teams to be family and this and mm -hmm. that. And it is, but, you know, to watch our guys like, like Zach, you know, and DeQuadre, Zach Lawrence and DeQuadre Currents, like you would think these guys have the greatest, most symbiotic relationship when the reality is they're an old married couple. Like these <laughs> dudes argue with each other all the time. Yeah. And, and it's fun to watch because, you know, really they're two highly competitive, very intelligent football players that, you know, realize that the success of the team, you, you know, is largely dependent on what those two guys do. 
and they both want to be successful so bad. And it's just, it's funny to watch them just go back and forth and practice, you know, in the film room during games. And, mm -hmm. but again, you know, to have two kids like that, it, it's really beneficial. Last question, coach, you've been around state championship teams. Does mm -hmm. this team have a state championship DNA? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It does. You know, the parts are there. Um, you know, I mean, you know, what's everybody want? You want a team that's big and, and long, and we've got that. You want teams to play great defense, and we've got that. And, you know, teams that consistently put drives together, make big plays on offense. And then the third part, which is where I think we're as good this year as we've ever been, and that's in the kicking game. Mm. You know, we've got a kicker that's putting the ball in the end zone, I mean, heck, probably 90% of the time. Um, you know, and obviously with DeQuadre and the guys on the return teams too, I mean, we're getting great, great field position. We get big plays out of the return game. Mm -hmm. You know, Kid Neo Espinosa, I think, has blocked four punts for us this year. Wow. So, yeah, we've been really good in the kicking game this year. All right. Well, Coach, good luck on Friday with Independence. It should be a big-time game as usual, and we'll see you in the playoffs next week. You got it. Thanks, Langston. <laughs>